Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 27th, and right now we are looking at the combination of Doppler radars here across the Pacific Northwest. You can see this spin in the atmosphere. It's a slow pressure center made landfall in southwest Washington. Winds gusting up over 50 miles per hour for Astoria, up towards 40 miles per hour for Olympia. But those 40 plus mile per hour gusts will likely miss the central and northern Puget Sound here, as you got to be on the south side of that where the best gradient is generally. And this thing just tracking right over Tacoma and Seattle as we speak. This will continue to push off to the east and get some gusty winds across some of eastern Washington and Oregon, generally south of I-90 here, but heads up for that. You can get some gusts up towards the 40, 45 mile per hour range as the system moves through here. Now, taking a look at what happened yesterday, you can see that strong thunderstorm that moved towards downtown Seattle yesterday. Nice shelf cloud action on that. Had some lightning strikes, had numerous heavy downpours across the area as well. Very fun, active weather day. And this is looking at the mid-level water vapor loop, and you can kind of see that low pressure center tracking right over the southern Puget Sound as we speak. This brought some lightning to the coastal area, and you can see a lightning strike there towards the I-5 corridor as well. Had a lot of lightning strike out over the ocean here. Nice warm ocean waters out there probably contributing to that instability as this mid-latitude cyclone moving on shore. Now, taking a look at the infrared satellite, you can kind of see that colder air back here. The cold air cumulus is going to continue on for the next couple of days, but the heavy rainfall should end with this system here, at least for a while. We're going to get some convergence on activity, so you can get some localized heavy amounts, but the widespread heavy rain that we've been getting the last few days is going to be winding down as we go through the day today. And if you want a nice, affordable home weather station to record all this crazy weather we get here in the Pacific Northwest, click on that link down below to save 10%. Looking at Seattle yesterday, check out these three-day rainfall totals uh, you know, six tenths of an inch, eight tenths of an inch, six tenths of an inch. And this is kind of on the lower side, just even around the general central Puget Sound area here. I, I think SeaTac got the short end of the stick a couple times with some of these heavier downpours, but still impressive rainfall totals put us above average. We're at 2.88 now and 1.6 is about the average for the month of September here. And yeah, uh, we might add a little bit more here, but we're going to end the month obviously above average here. Now, taking a look at the cocoa rods, you can see some of these totals across the Olympic Mountains up over five inches. The Washington coast, southwest Washington coast up over four inches for Long Beach there. Down the Oregon coast, a lot of three plus, four plus inches out there. And you can see the Willamette Valley, some areas up towards two inches also. But yeah, some areas in the southern Puget Sound right up towards three inches with this three-day total. I went, ran this one through uh, September 24th through September 27th. And you can clearly see the rain shadowing effect for eastern Washington. Get a, did get a little bit of light precipitation out there. There, but nothing like what was uh, accumulated west of the Cascades. And you can see the rain shadowing effect to the northeast of the Olympic Mountains across some of the San Juans here. Lesser amounts across Whidbey Island also, but decent amounts as you went north of Everett, just generally kind of just over an inch for the most part. This is looking at the landslide potential. And you can see Seattle Tacoma there starting to creep up there. Once you get on the right side of this red line, you got to worry about some landslide activity. Well, not quite there yet, but you know, we did get a pretty good three day total here. And again, some areas in the central. Puget Sound, we're up closer to three inches. So it's getting close to that, but it's generally something we don't really have to worry about until we get later on into the season. This is strong winds this morning. National Weather Service Seattle kind of calling attention to the gusts. You can kind of see the cutoff here, generally south of Seattle. Looks like it underdid it probably for a few of these areas here, but the general idea remains the same. And this is a National Weather Service Portland. I've been talking about this for the last few days here. When these first systems come in here, you know, broken branches or any kind of weakened trees from drought or insect during the summertime can come down quite easily. This is the peak gust for today. Spokane, there's Spokane, there's Moses Lake here, there's Pasco. Oregon down to the south here, but you can kind of see the I-90 cutoff here for some of the stronger gusts, but some areas could be getting 40, 45 miles per hour as this system tracks off to the east. Now, this is looking at the European last night, so we put this into motion. You can see once it got closer, some of the models kind of came into agreement where the low was going to make landfall, but you can see those gusty winds across southwest Washington, northwest Oregon. It didn't do too bad here this last run, but you can see the gust generally not into the central Puget Sound or northern Puget Sound here, and you can kind of see that wind as it tracks off to the east or across the eastern Washington as well. But again, like I've been talking about, the strongest winds usually stay offshore here with these systems. It was filling a bit here as it was making landfall. But again, Astoria gusted over 50 miles per hour, probably low 50s. And this is the HER3 cam. Not a bad job here as well. Kind of showing where the strongest winds made landfall right at the mouth of the Columbia there and not quite making it into the Seattle area here. But nailed that really pretty close to the 40 mile per hour gust there for Olympia. Now looking at Astoria here, this is kind of raw data and you can see 
peak wind at 45 knots, which is what, about 52, 53 miles per hour there, pressure rising rapidly. So yeah, interesting stuff. You probably definitely heard the wind howling if you were on some of the southwest Washington coast or along the Oregon coast last night and this morning. And this is the European. Did a pretty good job here on its latest ensemble rents here uh, as far as wind speeds are concerned. Tillamook gusty down there as well. They don't record peak wind speed there at the ASOS for Tillamook, but it was probably gusting up over 45 miles per hour also. This is the NAMP 3KM 80 meter wind speed. So you can see where that low pressure center made um, landfall there. And you can kind of see the cutoff there with the strongest winds being to the south, then moving off through eastern Washington. And this is looking at the UW model. You know, a few days ago, this thing had it going into northwest Oregon. It did correct somewhat. So as we got closer, you know, obviously the models do a better job here. But yeah, some of this, uh, the model runs had this moving into northwest Oregon here, ended up uh, coming to the solution there right across southwest Washington. This is looking at surface-based capes. So we have the chance of a couple thunderstorms here, especially as we're going in through tomorrow. But, you know, it's, it's going to general cold air a lot. We're not looking at super heavy precipitation we've been getting here. But you can see us destabilize as we go through tomorrow afternoon here across western Washington. So we'll keep that in the back of our mind and go over that again tomorrow morning. Here's looking at the radar, and this is pretty similar to what's going on right now. You can kind of see the spin in the atmosphere, the low pressure track across western Washington. And then we get some convergent zone activity as we go through the afternoon and tonight and kind of see that hanging on here. So we still could get some locally heavy amounts there across northern King, southern Snohomish County. And then we continue the showery activity as we go on in through Thursday. And then we drop a trough down over the Intermountain West. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. This is the lightning flash density of potential on the HER, the high resolution rapid refresh, the 12Z run. As we go through tomorrow, you can see we may have a couple lightning strikes here across western Oregon, Washington, up in eastern BC as well. Nothing too crazy though compared to the last few days. This is looking at 500 millibar heights and there goes our system here. This is yesterday afternoon's European run. Trough hanging out as we go through the end of the week and then we start to build this ridge. We may get a couple nice days out of here before the models are in some disagreement but they start to bring some troughs closer to the area again. You can see another one dropping down across Pacific Northwest as we go on in through next week. So we'll be watching that here closely gfs we'll look at next and this is the gfs there goes our secondary system this is last night 06z run which is about 11 p.m when that one starts to run and you can see this trough kind of hanging out here and this one is going to impact some of california and some of the intermountain west ridge builds let's see what happens in that looking off into the extended fantasy land here nice trough strings through british columbia and drops right down across pacific northwest we'll see how that goes you can see the european was further uh, east and weaker with that system here is a big ridge showing up on some of the model runs out over the Gulf of Alaska and Western Alaska. So something to watch. This is total precipitation in inches. Just trying to give you guys the idea that once this system moves through, we're going to start to relax those precipitation amounts here across the area, except for maybe that convergent zone as we go on in through tonight and tomorrow, some shower activity across the area. And as we scroll further out, you can see that upper level low dropping down across the Intermountain West. And it could be bringing some wraparound moisture to places like Boise, Idaho, the higher terrain back up into Oregon and uh, Montana and Wyoming. More on that here towards the end of the video. This is a daily two meter max temperature here. And you can see maybe we bounce back a little bit here with some of that ridging coming up. But yeah, the, the days of the heat waves here are probably gone here across the Pacific Northwest, but you can still get nice days this time of year. Heck, you can get nice days any time of year across Pacific Northwest if you set things up right. But looking at Seattle, Tacoma, this is the system we're dealing with now. Then the kind of ridging builds in and then the potential for some additional systems here as we go on in through the following week. Again, we have plenty of time to look at that um, over the next few days as well. Tillamook also something similar here. A bit of a break and then the return of maybe a couple systems. This is Boise. This would be that wraparound moisture. The upper level low settles down over southern Oregon, California, Nevada. So we'll be watching this one over the next couple days also. And this is taking a look at six hour precipitation. There goes the system we're dealing with now. Some convergent zone activity, some shower activity tomorrow. Upper level low settles down over the Intermountain West. And you can see some of this wraparound moisture here for Idaho as we go on in through this weekend across Nevada, Montana, Wyoming, kind of clipping Oregon here as well as I scroll back and forth and then some additional systems potentially on in through next week, which we'll just watch as we go.
But yeah, interesting stuff out there yesterday. If you got any pictures out there, put them on Twitter or link me on, you know, at Seattle Weather Guy. I know a lot of you guys follow me there on Twitter. But anyway, um, yeah, so we'll just continue to watch what's coming off in the extended. What a storm train we had there. I mean, the impressive stuff. A lot of precipitation. We had lightning. We had some wind out there. You know, there's probably even a little bit of localized flooding. I know there's a lot of water standing out there when I go on my dog walks in the morning and stuff. But anyway, yeah, I hope you guys are liking these videos. Uh, click like and subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow. We'll see what's coming, and I will talk to you guys then.